Hallelujah, we abide in Him. How many of you are excited that you're not abiding in your uncle? Yes, sir. Oh, you know, when you're not talking to me this morning, I begin to feel someone offending you. Morning, and we'll be looking at our core scripture for the month, John 15. We'll be considering from verse number one, if time permits, we'll take it up to verse number 10. You feeling well? Yes, if you're not going to say nothing, to ask him, Are you okay? Are you feeling well? Yes, sir. All right, someone always asks because he cares. Don't think I'm always expecting yes. I wouldn't mind if I hear no more. So then we can take care of it. However, have you found John 15 from the Are you
So shall ye be my what? Disciples. Verse 9, quickly. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Finally, everybody. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Someone say amen. Amen. Our Father will trust your word. And we know that your word will do us good this morning. Cause us to abide in you. Let your word walk on us in us. In Jesus' mind, let me pray. Amen. If you're alive, let me hear your dominion. Amen. Amen. start this morning by first trying to throw a light on the contents of the scripture we just read. This are Jesus' final words as he was about to leave his disciples. Now if your father is about to die and began to speak to you, you don't take those words lightly. Am I correct? Some of you who had an opportunity to hear your parent, either your father or your mother or someone beloved has spoke to you before you depart, it becomes like a guided force throughout your life. You will always make reference, my father said this to me before he passed. So even when you are about to derail, that word of your father for the wise people will always be like a guide. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now that was what is going on here, Jesus was talking to the disciples. These are not just ordinary men. These are men he is about to hand over all that he has worked for. They are the ones that will determine how far this gospel will go. So Jesus felt it was important that he will give them the key to success. Give them the key to what? Success. And if they will be successful here on earth, these are the things they should know. In other words, Jesus unveiled the secrets of success to them. So I want everyone, I may not want to preach, because I want this thing to drop on everyone. I want every one of us to be able to grab the word from me. Now, the problem we have in the church, and let me just say not in the church, in many groups we found ourselves, and in everywhere we are, is that in our pursuit, to achieve our dreams, we do not prioritize the right things. Did you hear what I said? We pursue success, or we pursue being fruitful according to the context where we are in, more than being stable. We make successful or being fruitful to seem to be more important than our stability. The Bible says if a foundation is broken, what then can a righteous man, a man whose ways are right, will be helpless? So what I'm saying in this is, your stability is more important than your fruitfulness. If you become fruitful overnight, and you are not stabilized, you will waste even the fruits and the seed. Do you know what I said? Yes, sir. Because you know it is in the endless fruits that seed is located. Huh? Yes, sir. How many of you felt in your lifetime there are money that have come your way, you have used wrongly and you regret it and you felt God give you an opportunity? Yes, sir. Why? Because at the time that money came, you are not stable enough. When I talk about stability, it's not just about sitting down. It's about mental organization. Ability to manage what God gives you, whether positive or negative. Stability. So in our pursuit for life, we should be careful that first thing we do is to learn to be stable. And that's what Jesus was saying to them, that they, they are by your success. It's not the matter whether you'll be successful in ministry. It's not the matter whether you'll be successful in business. It's not the matter whether you'll be successful in marriage. It's not the matter whether you'll be successful in education or your academic pursuit or any career of life wherein you are pursuing. It is not the matter. The matter is, Learn to be 
I've seen people who let me spread today because it's trending. When it seemed not to be bringing forth, when they would have mastered it, they leave it for another trade. And they went out on simple to give the kind of because their mind is focused on fruitfulness. Their mind is focused on gain. When they would have been called pro, they drop it and go for another thing. If they know so many things they have learned, I'm not trying to say to be multi-talented is bad, but you need to develop properly whatever you are doing before you get to another thing. If you're long enough in a thing, you will realize there will be a time where you wish not to continue. The <laughs> time. You know, when I started a church, you no. Know, when I started a church, the church, people came, people came, people came around. And one of my friends said, no, no, no. Hey, that's not the way. People will gather Christ to come and know what you're doing. And then they will leave. Then your members will some of your members will come. There will be another thing that will happen. If you are stable, problem will come and push you. Some will leave you. Those that are meant for you will stay. Then as you grow, another shaking will come. All of those shakings is God oriented. I said, ah, how? Is God a scatterer? Because we read this scripture. We realize that the cutting off and the porching, we are all the army work of God, not the devil. Yes, sir. Is somebody getting something this morning? Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know how you can explain it to someone, but I can These things I'm celebrating, all of a sudden, it's cut off. How many of you have lost something and you blame God? Say, God, where are you? Sometimes we say some unbreakable things to him as though he sleeps. The Bible says he never sleeps, no slumber. I hope you're okay where I'm taking you this morning. No, the Bible says he never sleeps, no slumber. So why would God give me certain things and all of a sudden take it away? If this branch that there is not fruit shall be cut off, the cut off of the branch that bears fruit may be to kill you. In fact, it implies in the original manuscript to kill. But the one that bears food that is forged is not to kill, it's to create capacity to be able to be more. Now, now let me help you quickly. Let, I, I think, let me just drop this quickly. How do you know as you prone the branch, it also loses some fruits? What I said. As you pour or bloom the branch, it also loses some fruit. Was the fruit not good? But sometimes in our course to walk with God, we lose some good things. This one is not for that. <laughs> you lose some of the things that you so much desire that are so wonderful. In the course of your work with you, it is also to create capacity. That's why you have this relationship because of God. And you get into it with all the excitement. And hey, and this is the Lord, and this is the Lord. Oh my goodness, you take all that cares to hear, and this is the Lord. But all of a sudden, that relationship, for no reason, just go. If you're not careful at that point, there's a lost point. It will make you not to want to continue to uh, abide. And that's why Jesus was not telling them, if you abide in me, no irrespective of the circumstance or the situation or the condition that you meet yourself, it is in you abiding, not minding what is going on. So 
So the result of your fruitfulness is not because the negative things that happen around you. The reason why we feel so discouraged, so disturbed, so broken down is that we don't even understand that the things that happen around us are also working for us. Then our attitude here about begin to make us to lose the purpose for which whatever that happens, happened. What's your attitude? When you lose God, you so much treasure. Or when your prayers are not answered. Many of times, that the word of the Lord will say, that whatsoever I ask in his name, hey, you forgot that is the way you abide in good time and in bad time. When you do not allow the good, the bad time to make you not to abide. Can I quickly say this to you again? Holy Spirit, help me. That your time of making it well to become more stable is not a time of joy. You don't become strong and committed because you have all that you pray for. In fact, if you ask me, that's when your prayer point comes low. Is somebody here now? Yes, sir. <laughs> Many times we abide, our abiding shows forth in times of negative situations, troubles of life. That you succeeded, this happened, but you still fail. That's when you grow. Our growth is not when all went well. Our growth is in the midst of things that we expected to walk in certain ways and it didn't work and we still trust God. I wish you asked anyone have a question the way your face is at this moment. We don't know what the Bible says. The wrong things. Are you there? How many things? How many things? Does what? For what? For how many people? For those that did works. You're not talking, you don't know the scripture. For those that did what? Those who love God, they love to abide. Even when situations around them would have ordinarily made them not to abide. Now I ask somebody who said, hey, then I'm tired. Hey, I said, okay, try, try the word. If you can fit in, that's okay. I'm not afraid in those days. Who was so angry with God? I say, oh no, what is this? Everybody has done this, I've not done that. Everybody has done this, I've not done that. Everybody has done this, I've not done that. I'm no longer going to serve God. I see this doing God and then you flip it up. You know what happened? He quit it. I want to join the world. And he did join. Get into the campus and flow with everybody. Two weeks. Three weeks. One month, he came back to the Bible fix them. I can't. I said, why? He said, you know, they walk on. I am with them, but I'm not with them. I tried to carry them, but I'm not fit. I tried to do the things they do, I'm not fit. Because he is not with them. He came back, crushed. Crying, Lord, I send me back. Now, if you look at the word in Genesis, I think Genesis chapter number 18, or Genesis 8, rather, Genesis 8, verse number 22, the Bible says, As long as the earth remains, it's a seed time. Come on, check it out. Seed time and harvest. Huh? Shall what? Shall not cease. Now you see the world is being ruled by agricultural terror. Everything God does, surrounded by agriculturists. <laughs> huh? Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Now let's talk about the world being planted. Being planted. Somebody said being planted. Being planted. A tree that grows wild in the bush is not a product of agriculture. Come on now. Yes, sir. Don't you need your little agriculture. It is agriculture because someone planted 
because someone tends to it, someone take care of it. Now, are you are you there over there? Yes, it is not just by accident. So someone will hold someone responsible if anything happened to it. Did you get your phone tomorrow? And the headspin have gone. You will take it lightly. Because what? It is your responsibility to take care of it. Now the Bible said, God said, He is the husband. Jesus said, I am. My father is the one that takes care. The husband man means the one that plants, the one that waters, the one that makes sure it grows, the one that takes care of the weed. Are you here with me? He said, But I am the friendly, I am planted in the garden by a careful father. Holy Spirit. Meaning, church, you are not a product of accident. Did you hear what I said? You are where you are because a good husband planted you. How many of you know that a seed does not decide the ground where it was planted? They say Kukumba does not do well in the southeast. I have my photograph of my Kukumbas. I've never seen a Kukumba that is sold in the market as big as mine. Planted in the southeast. I planted it. I weed it. I nurtured it. Now I go to the farm and make sure that it grows. I've never done it before. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if we are planted in Him, meaning you are not a product of accident. No matter what is happening, do you know there are some trees that you will not allow it to grow a certain pattern? But others, if they decide to cut it at a certain place to make it grow in another pattern. Now, you see, you, you, you don't even have to look at this plant and this plant and say, why are you growing this way? Some trees grow on top of another. Some crops grow, needed stain to grow. Some are allowed to grow by themselves. Some are allowed to grip on the ground. They were all planted by a husband. They were not planted, they were not, they were not just formed by the roadside. Someone deliberately planted I got a message for someone where you Someone say I'm planted by God. I'm planted by God. Okay. My father is the house. If you abide in me, and then my word, if you stay where I plant you. What you needed to succeed is not your problem. Did you hear what I said? If you stay long enough in him, then look at the condition that we saw that we don't if you abide in me. And then my word abide in you. What's the need of the word abide in you? It is not the rest of the world that you understand how to survive in where you are placed. If you don't have the word in you, you will not understand the principles that will help you enjoy or maximize the best there is in the place you are located. How many of you know? That the principles look the same, but the pattern are not the same. You didn't get what I said. The principles are the same, but the patterns are not the same. <laughs> Shall I explain more? Now listen. Your family is different from his family. 
there are things that happen in the family. The manner you will solve it will not be the way this one's family will be solved. Yeah? If you try to apply your pattern in their family, there may be a little fight. So you will understand the situation that is peculiar to your family and with the wisdom, solve it. Maybe in your family, the way situation arises, the best is not to talk about it. Why in other family we must talk about it? So that everybody will freely end their mind. But in other family, maybe if you try to end your mind, a fight will come and more problem will come, isn't it? So you see, the, the issue is that you will not decide to leave the family that you are. Because what is obtainable in this family is not obtainable in your family. What do you do? You keep abiding. He keeps saying, no, no matter how you get angry, I'm not like your family. You can only get angry for a moment, you're still there in them. Can I tell you something? Even when you change your name, they didn't change their blood. They see to your cousins and they say, are you going to get it? Yeah. How many of you know that God planted you there for a purpose? Yeah. Another thing I just want to say with you before I leave you now is that when we come together in church, the best that we can ever do is to abide. To abide. Abide in Him. There are problems we have in churches, in places, also in families. Is that while we are abiding, we try to measure our success with other people's success. And that's the wrongest thing that will ever happen to you. When you are always provoked because someone else seems to be doing better than you, you will never go far. Because your motivation is another man's success. Hey, this one is deep. Should I say it again? When you are always get, yeah, you can be challenged, please get it right, but not angry. When, how do you know when you're angry or not challenged? When whatever you see going on in another person's life makes you to be a little bit bitter and ask God, why not me? Why not me? Why not me? Rather than, Lord, thank you for this person that I'm challenged. That if this guy can live long enough to enjoy this, as I keep abiding in my area, one day, one day, too soon that I ever think it will be my turn. There are different approach I want to let you know. You see, when you get angry, you defy your blessings. If you know what makes it worse, that the person you are angry or let me use the right word, jealous, may not even notice it. But the consequence of your inaction is upon you. And so we get jealous. Of some people, of the result that they showcased, they will not see their body, will not see their cotton. You didn't hear what I said. You know, how many of us know there's no way you can tell all the testimony when you stand? You only tell what the Lord do. In fact, church, we lost, we don't even time after. We tell you, we don't have time. Don't tell us what the devil did. Tell us all that the Lord did. If I may just divide a little bit, but I don't say you should take our time. Sometimes what the devil did will also let us know how long you endured before what now you now receive from God. Because if you just come and say, the Lord bless me with a car and thank God for that, and don't let us know that you have ever trained in your life and never had food to eat, then people will not appreciate the value of the car and the reason why you are celebrating the way you are celebrating. And you hear what I'm saying? So in truth, we get jealous of each other. People match your church. You think it is better because it's better than them. And because you that do not know, you live a life of 
unsatisfaction, unsatisfactory lifestyle. I always lack. Even if you're on the block with school, you still say, I don't have. They didn't hear what I said. One day, how we wish we can tell some people to come to your wardrobe and take some of the dresses that you say is no longer good because you have one in two or three times. Oh God, have mercy. And then you begin to look at some other person. You don't know what they did many years ago. I tell people, young girls, don't look at these women who have passed through life, who have sold their dresses, who have sold everything they have. Don't do what they do. You don't know what they went through to be where they are. Now they are wearing a bone of 200,000, 300,000. Want to be like them. Listen to me. No, you can't just come from nowhere to somewhere. Listen to me. There are steps to life. There are steps to life. If you keep abiding in the place God bless you, if you stay long enough, one day will be your turn. One day. Because we don't understand that it's not the celebration that makes the man, it is a pain that makes the man. Celebration means I stayed long enough until my change came. If you are abiding in me, I'm my Lord abiding in you. Now, do you know what makes this abiding a little bit complex to me, church? Is that he didn't tell us the duration of our abiding. Oh, I didn't get this one. Neither his thoughts are thought. 
Let me pray to him by myself. And God will say, come home. As we are praying, hey, Lord, why are you this weekend? How can I look at this small boy? No, 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 no. The small boy will not die as long as he abide in him. But look, why are you looking at me now? And that's the truth. So as I go in the walk with God, I said, thank God you called me here. I was talking to my children and I said, there are certain things I've learned of life I wouldn't have learned if I don't go through things I went through. Yeah. My strength is not out of the things that I, that I did well or the things that bring joy to me. In my place of tears, I, I discover my strength. God will cut off things from you. He will cut off a relationship from you for what he wants to do. In the Bible is correct. I said all things. Someone say all things. All things. Does what? For what? All For how many people? All it's only accurate when the person of God loves God. So you see, when somebody that loves God is going through some kind of disturbing situation, stay cool. God is working it out. There is something the mastermind. There is something the great architect. There's something the good husbandman, the best agriculturist, he knows when to plant what to plant, he knows the one to remove. How many of you know that it's not all the seed you plant together? Or oh, you didn't know now? Or oh, you didn't hear what I said? When you plant ground, there, there are some other things you don't plant. Oh, are you there now? Then when you plant here, yeah, there are certain things you don't plant. So when God begins to trip off some people off your life, the question you ask yourself is, do I love God? If you answer is yes, then for it, and say, am I abiding in him? And you say yes, then stay cool. Stay cool. Not too long, you will see what is working. You may not understand it. Not too long. So you see, it is the work of God to cut off those that you will never relate again in life. It is the work of God to prune, eh? cause some issues of pain in the course of your abiding relationship, cause some issues of pain. It is still His work. So you understand it, that the pruning and the cutting is not the work of Satan. You will gain a better understanding. Thank you.